Hey guys, welcome to Travel Feels. Today we're gonna to talk about gimbals. They're like the fidget spinners of the filmmaking world right now. And the question is, do you really need one? When you're starting out in filmmaking, and even later on, there's always the problem of gear lust. You see that new thing that comes out and you're like, oh, I wish I had that, or I would be a way better filmmaker if I had that, or my films would just be so much better if I had that thing. But we all know that's really only partly true and it's really easy to get caught up in the gear lust. So the question is, is a gimbal gonna make you a better filmmaker and is it gonna make your films better? And the answer is yes, if. And let me explain that if part. So first off, you definitely need some sort of stabilization for your camera, whether it's a monopod, a tripod, a steady cam, or easy rig, shoulder rig, a gimbal, you need some form of stabilization. There's nothing worse than that little ugly micro jitter that you get from DSLRs when you're just holding it in your hands. It's just really bad looking and it right away makes your films look really amateur. So you definitely need some form of stabilization for your camera and not to mention the movement that you can get with some of those tools. We've talked about different kinds of cinematic movement and the different tools you can use to get different kinds of looks and gimbals really are a great way right now to get really nice cinematic movement in your films. But gimbals are really tricky in my opinion. I think there's such a new technology that they haven't quite figured out what's the best way of using that technology. The form factor really a lot of times just makes it a really terrible user experience and in the end you're just kind of battling with the gimbal half the time and it's not really working the way it should be. Which ends up taking away from your film and you're missing shots and you're missing those moments. So gimbals are really a double-edged sword I find a lot of the times. And a lot of the products out there just aren't that good right now. The technology might be good, but the way they're implementing it, it just doesn't work. I've had a few different gimbals so far. I've had the Pilot Fly H2, which was okay, but not quite what I was looking for. The payload was there, but you could never really put bigger cameras on there because you just ran out of space so quickly. I've also had the Movi M10 for a little bit, which is for bigger, heavier cameras like my C300 Mark II. And that's just a different class on its own. It's really for more professional use. Movi is kind of the industry standard in Hollywood and in professional filmmaking. And now I've added a new guy to the list. The Nebula 5100 slant made by Film Power. I was really excited to test out this new gimbal because it looked like they fixed a lot of those things, those issues that I had, especially with the Pilot Fly H2, and really just corrected them and made the user experience much better. At least on paper. And that's the thing, you never know if a product is really as good as it should be. On paper it might be super good, but then you go to use it and it's actually not that good. So the only way to test something is by actually taking it on a shoot and seeing how it performs and then looking at the footage afterward and seeing how did your footage turn out? How did the video turn out? Did it help you in the process? Was it just a big headache or what was going on? So I decided to do a little shoot with my friend Alan Palander. He's an Instagrammer. You should go and check him out. Link in the description. He has awesome photos. And I just really wanted to see what is the Nebula 5100 slant like in the real world. But before we get into the test footage, I want to say a huge thank you to the amazing people at Squarespace for sponsoring this episode. I really like that Squarespace has partnered up with Travel Fields because they just make a great product. It's the first website building platform that I've used that I really just enjoyed making my website. Not only is it really easy and intuitive to build the website, but they have really, really nice looking templates that you can start off with and make a beautiful website for yourself. It's quick and easy. You don't have to do any updates or patches or any of that stuff. It's all done for you. You just make the website, boom, done, easy. And if you do have any questions, they have amazing customer service to help you out whenever you're in need. And you know, the easiest way to turn your hobby into a business is by making a website. It just adds so much credibility to you and you can showcase all your work. Make sure it's a really high quality website. Make it with Squarespace. So whether you need a domain, website, or online store, start your free trial today at squarespace.com and use the offer code TRAVELFEELS to get 10% off your first purchase. The link is down in the description, go and check it out, and here's the test footage from the new gimbal.
right off the bat, I can say that this is by far my favorite little handheld gimbal that I've used so far for DSLRs. They just fix so many of the things I hated in this form factor. So let's start off with the pros. First off, the power of the motors. I wanted to really test this out. I think they said the payload is somewhere around seven pounds, which is quite a bit of weight. And I'm really skeptical with these handheld gimbals. Usually they say a higher weight and it doesn't really work out. So I wanted to really push this. I put my 5D Mark IV on there with a 16 to 35 and an ND filter. So there's quite a bit of weight on there. And for the most part, it did really well. It was really easy to balance. And because the motors are so powerful, you actually don't need to have perfect balance. The motors will do the rest of the job, but you do want to balance it pretty well still. You will get the most optimal results that way. But it is a huge benefit that the motors can kind of take over and make up some of those mistakes that you made in balancing. We actually put Allen's 1DX Mark II on this gimbal. Now, it didn't balance quite perfectly, so I wouldn't necessarily recommend this. There just wasn't enough room to slide the camera further down. It was a little bit top heavy. But because of the motors being so strong, it was still able to handle the camera even though it wasn't balanced perfectly, which is pretty crazy. Of course, it's not gonna be optimal because it's not balanced right, so you are gonna get some shakes sometimes. I did not think that this gimbal could handle a 1DX Mark II because it's a pretty big camera and it's pretty beefy, and I wouldn't necessarily recommend it, but the fact that it was actually able to hold it up and stabilize it is really impressive. Again, I do not recommend putting the 1DX Mark II on this gimbal because it doesn't balance perfectly, but you are able to get it on there. Super impressive. So the first big pro is the amount of weight that you can stick on there and how easy it is to balance. Next, I really like that it comes with this stand. This was one of my big gripes with these gimbals is that they're so hard to balance. There's no way you can set it down and just balance it without having to hold it and kind of just fiddle around with it the whole time. But with this, you can just put it on the ground, balance it all out and you're good to go super easy. This is a really handy thing. It doesn't seem like it's that big of a deal, but I really liked it. And when I was shooting, what I ended up doing was actually just folding them down like this. And that way the handle is just much longer. I was able to kind of hold it from here two handed and just make it more stable and get some different shots that I wouldn't have been able to get if I was just holding it from the handle up here. So this is a really good addition, I think. I really like this. And the reason why I think that this is the best gimbal right now is because of this slant right here. Traditionally, the back arm here has actually covered up the LCD screen so you can't see what you're filming. And this is a really big problem. It's really hard to see what you're doing and either you're kind of just peering through the side or you're flying blind. But now, look at this you can see the whole LCD screen right now because of this slant, it doesn't get in the way. Ingenious, I like this so much. This is really handy and makes this gimbal so much more user friendly and just so much more enjoyable to use. I don't like feeling like I can't see what I'm filming and with this, I can see exactly what's going on, super handy. Well done film power, well done. Now for the cons, there's a few of them but really they're not that big actually for me. First off, I think that the handle could have maybe used some rubber. It's just metal. It's really solid feeling, but it could have maybe been a little bit more comfortable. Again, it's not that big of a deal. And with this extra little handle here to hold on to, I actually really like this. But it could be a little bit more comfortable on the hand. I could see that if you're using this for a long time and if your hand gets sweaty, it might slip around a little bit more. So it would be really nice to have some rubber on there. One of my biggest pet peeves with these gimbals is that the horizon goes off quite often and there's no really good way of fixing that. Um, so that has happened a few times with this gimbal, but not too badly. And you can just kind of hold it, move it, and just wait for it to kind of lock there, and there you go. But it is really hard to tell when the horizon is actually level. So that's a little bit of a pet peeve that comes with all these gimbals I've found. And lastly, the only other odd thing I found is the placement of the joystick, which is actually on the side of the handle instead of on the back over here. I think this kind of makes the joystick a bit useless, except for just positioning it before the shot, kind of setting it up. Up. But actually, I never use the joysticks anyways. I think they always are kind of useless. It's just really hard to do really smooth movements with the joystick. I prefer just moving it by myself on my own. But be aware, if you do use the joystick a lot, this one isn't so good because it's on the side. All in all, this is my new favorite gimbal for DSLRs and smaller cameras. 
I'm usually super skeptical with new gimbals. I feel like they promise a ton and they don't really end up delivering. And I'm not being paid a penny to say this, but I highly, highly recommend this gimbal. I was super skeptical, but it really is the best gimbal that I've used so far in this smaller form factor. Okay, so is a gimbal going to make you a better filmmaker and make your films better? And the answer is yes, if you're using it as a learning experience. Straight out of the box, a gimbal will probably actually make you a worse filmmaker. You'll be fiddling around with it, you'll be hating your life because it's not balancing and you're not figuring it out and you're missing the shots because the sun is setting and you don't have the gimbal set up yet. It's probably gonna make your films worse actually in the beginning. But if you take it as a learning experience, like you're adding another tool to your toolbox of skills, then yes, it's gonna make you a better filmmaker. And in that case, yes, a gimbal is good for you. That's the way I see new gear. Is it gonna teach me a new skill that over time will make me a better filmmaker? That's why, for example, I bought the Movi M10 because I wanted to learn how to use these gimbals. I wanted to be able to be really confident with a gimbal. If I needed to use one on a shoot, I could really use it and make my films better if I had the opportunity opportunity to use a gimbal. I invested that money into the gear, but really I'm investing it into myself and into my skills. But if you don't take it as a learning experience, you don't take the time to learn how to use it properly, then a gimbal is definitely not for you. You should not get a gimbal. You do not need a gimbal. And in fact, it'll probably make your films worse because you'll just be missing all those shots and you'll just be hating the filmmaking process. So don't think that you need a gimbal for sure. Stabilization is a must, but a gimbal is not the only way to do it. But if if you want really cinematic movement, a gimbal is a great tool for taking your films to the next level and making you a better filmmaker if you take the time to really learn how to use them. But if you're just a hobbyist and you don't really care about making crazy, epic, really high quality films, then you don't need a gimbal. I wouldn't actually suggest for you to get one. But if you are looking for a gimbal that's not too expensive and can hold quite a bit of weight, then the Nebula 5100 Slant is a really good option for you. It's by far my favorite smaller form factor gimbal. So there we have it. Not everyone needs a gimbal, but it is a really great tool. Guys, if you haven't checked out the Cinelets already, they are on sale still for $10 only for this week. After this week, they will go up in price. So make sure you grab yours if you've been thinking about it. Purchase it right now. Link is in the description. Guys, I hope you liked this video. Hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. But more importantly, enjoy the filmmaking process and go get some of those travel feels. So